Red October Network. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, you may have noticed a little bit of uh, missing data here with the uh, updates on Hurricane Irene. I apologize for that. Uh, we had a little problem with the computer um, the one night, I think it was Thursday night, and I tried to basically go and issue updates and the computer froze so we couldn't do it. So anyway, speaking of Irene, um, I've been reading some of your comments actually about this. I have a link here to a uh, little damage scene. And a lot of people have been raising the, uh, the statement that uh, people were thinking, oh, this was overhyped. And this was something where, you know, they had no intention. Some people were even saying that this was like kind of a conspiracy to get people back to work. And I, I don't know about that, but, um, but I can tell you a few things that I know about, uh, about this storm. I want to do a little bit of analysis here. Um, I think first of all, a lot of the evacuations were, uh, necessary. Uh, Basically, if you've been in meteorology, if you're if if you're any any bit inclined to know anything about the weather, uh, if you're my age, I'm 25, uh, and you know anything about what happened in New Orleans, um, you'll know why these evacuations took place. When if you go look at back in uh, some of the early videos I had, uh, there was a uh, a uh, short clip of the Weather Channel. It's called Hurricanes Living on the Edge. And you can take a look at it. It's uh, They were talking about New Orleans. And a lot of people thought about New Orleans. They said, oh, nothing's going to happen. Andrew happened. And Andrew was just lucky because it, uh, it went very far away. It went over the swampland of Louisiana. So, And a lot of people were kind of ignorant. Now, New York presents a very uh, unique uh, perspective. Uh, New York, uh, despite all the things that happened with September 11th, which I guess you could say was very... Uh, one good thing that came out of it was that uh, that we designed evacuation plans for buildings. But uh, Hurricane Irene's evacuations were absolutely necessary. And I'm not telling you this because of because I'm a government worker, I work with National Weather Service or anything like that. I'm telling you the honest truth because Hurricane Irene did one thing that I think no meteorologist expected, and that was it uh if you go look at the um the satellite images, if you look um Friday night into Saturday you will see a big dry slot that appeared in uh, into the hurricane where it was very low uh, or a very high temperature which is basically clear air on an infrared satellite and that's essentially what happened with Irene. Now I think honestly that Irene at least uh, showed us what could potentially be uh, a, a a problem in the future. I, th I actually think I actually think that a lot of the uncertainty that you see with it is uh, uh, tends to make a lot of people naive. Let's put it that way. And I notice a lot of people. I have this article here on Yahoo. I'll post a link to it so you'll see it pop up right now. And please click on it. And um, I wanted uh, if you see my comments on there, you can read them. And uh, pretty easy to tell, but uh, but I often think that you know a lot of people say, oh, you know this is this is a uh, this is a thing where uh, you know it was hyped, and I will agree that the mainstream media, for example, did kind of overblow this a little. Uh, a lot of my meteorologist friends were concerned about this. They were more concerned about New York City than anything. Um, obviously, you know, the Del Marva got the worst of it, and um, so we had to be very diligent with it. And But uh, I can tell you the honest truth. You, 
if if you know any meteorologists, they will tell you that this was a problem, and we didn't want this to turn into another Katrina, which it was looking like that because the, even though uh, even though Irene was nowhere near as strong or as powerful as Katrina was, and New Orleans, granted, is one of the most vulnerable places on Earth. Uh, Bangladesh is probably number one. Florida is number two. New Orleans is number three. And New York, I think, would come as a close number four, I would say, to uh, tropical cyclones. So I think uh, the, biggest, the biggest argument that you could make about Irene is that, uh, that basically Irene was a rather scary storm, to say the least. But it was also a big wake-up call, I would say, for the, for the storms because, um, because basically we had so much preparation to do and it kind of gave people a reality check. Now, whether that reality check means now people will be kind of ignorant of it and we'll see another storm like this, which is very likely, I will say, uh, if not this year and the next few years. We don't know, but we can tell you right now that climatologically, New York hasn't had a storm in a while, but it's not completely out of the question that something like this could happen. So, I also wanted to uh, address a little bit of a uh, thing. Somebody actually showed me a uh, image from Wisconsin, uh, a microwave image, and I'll post a link to it. I want you to pay attention to the, uh, hang on, just, I want you to pay attention to the, sorry about that, I want you to pay attention to the, uh, to the image, uh, where you see there's little lines that seem to be extending from, um, the southeast part of the storm, and, I'm just going to add this a little, uh, a little bit. I want you to watch the lines, and then I want you to watch when the map shifts. You will see that the lines shift too, which means that they aren't what you think they are. They're not lasers. But pay attention to it real closely. I'll put a, I'll put a link up to this. So overall, um, Irene wasn't very destructive. Obviously. Uh, for those of you who were in eastern Pennsylvania, New York, uh, I'm glad that it wasn't as bad. Although you guys did see a lot of rain, which was very uh, unfortunate. Excuse me, because um, I think it was a little bit. Uh, it was a little bit uh, scary for it, but. Philadelphia got, I wish I could have been in Philadelphia experiencing some hurricane force winds, but overall it was a big mess, but I t I'm telling you the honest truth about this, do not completely ignore warnings, the government did the right thing, the local governments did the right thing, the state governments, the federal government all did the right thing, this was not something to get jobs, this was not a government conspiracy or HARP or whatever it is, and if it was HARP, this just just disproves it because if you look at that image, uh, you will see that it wasn't strengthened, and to say the least, it was very uh, it's kind of a big mess, I guess you could say. So, um, but I obviously will say this: um, if you do get these warnings in the future, do pay attention to them. They're very very important and do what you can to uh, prepare for this because sometimes we are going to have misses like this. I mean, meteorology is not a perfect science, neither is climatology, which some people said this is a fact of global warming. It has nothing to do with it. I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm, degree, I'm a degree climatologist. I went to the number one school for it, Penn State, and I can tell you that even if they were on the IPCC, this was this had nothing to do with climatology absolutely nothing to do so um just uh hang in there obviously you know be glad nothing happened 
why nothing happened to one of my friends who lives in New York. She drove back down to uh, South Central PA. So, uh, give me your comments. Obviously, take a look at that image just to prove you that Harp isn't real, uh, or it's not used for wire modification, despite all the things you hear. And I will be back, hopefully later. So, um, enjoy the rain and the wind and uh, if you have any good videos you can post them here obviously post them as responses I'd love to see your uh, hurricane videos of Irene don't post any other hurricanes but uh, we have Jose also the little storm that could but uh, anyways we'll check back later see you